the fucking Eagle Double G. Snoop Dogg. You know what happened with the D R E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took that serious. Batman and Robin examine a recording. Hey Cleveland, what's happening? Psycho Mike here. Sitting on a bus with Sanctuary recording artist, Super Joint Ritual, which is Phil Anselmo. I want to, it's great to be here, man. Did you hear that intro? What's happening? <laughs> <sir? laughs> Alright, well it's going to be part two of the uh, interview. We're going to air the first part, which you've already seen. We're going to air some videos, and then we're going to see this one. So on this one, I want to ask you things like, what's your favorite horror movie? That's impossible. That's an impossible <laughs> question. Uh, I've got so many horror films that it's it's tough to even talk about. So, and I've got a lot of favorites. I mean, top of your head. Top. The first thing that popped in my head was there was a long running, pretty long running series um, in the early '70s called Night Gallery and. Uh, Rod, Rod, Sterling. Sterling. Rod, yeah, Rod yeah. I grew up with it. He, uh, yeah, he would host the thing and all. It was after Twilight Zone, and it was just the style of it. No, I love it. You know, I've, I've got Sterling. every single episode. One. Yeah, pretty much. You know, that's cool. Okay, uh, next question. But that's not a oh. horror movie. You know no, no, it's not. Right, exactly right. You know, I don't know. Uh, Evil Dead One. Hands, hands, hands that's, down. That's a good one. Oh, it's more than good. Uh, Exorcist is great. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree with that one. <laughs> Let the player play the hell of a role. Amityville Two has uh, a grace to it that is uh, lovable. I think you know. Did you see Rod Zombies? Uh, House of Thousand Corpses. Uh, man, I only saw it one time, and I was half beyond the point. No, 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 no. I wasn't uh, drunk no. or drunk or anything. I was just I, I wasn't really watching. Okay. What, the way I do watch horror films, but that means absolutely nothing because take a film like Let's Scare Jessica to Death. I watched it probably five. I got it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I was like, okay, yeah, I see why people think it's scary. And it grew on me, you know? And then on the flip side of that, there's movies like The Blair Witch Project, which is a pile of shit. It, it made a lot of money, though. Boy. For being a piece of shit. So did Poison. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good point. Okay. Next one is I heard you had a haunted house in. NOLA? Is, or is, is it 24-7 one? Or? New, New Orleans, Louisiana is NOLA. NOLA. Yeah. Uh, at least three years ago, I was a major part, four years ago, I was a major part of a haunted house that still runs during the month of October. And it's called the House of Shock. And I think it's taken a more commercial swing when I was there there was a contingency of 
year-rounders who would fly in and everybody would stay at my house the whole month of, of October and we'd all just get into character. The <laughs> tattoo artist Paul Booth <laughs> and the horror director uh, Jim Van Beverham. We'd all, they'd all, uh, Let's you know, we'd all, you know, scare the crap out of people. And the House of that. Shock was huge. I love it that. was uh, about 30 different rooms. It took you about 30 minutes to 45 minutes to even make it through the whole thing. So it's, it's, cool. it, it was badass, yeah. That's cool. Okay, gonna change up a little bit. Go for it. How's the new record doing and how's the tour going? You mean the last record we did? No, the Lethal... Lethal Dose, yeah. yeah. Fine. It's going fine. Uh, it's not... Not as uh, big as what you expect. Uh, or what you're used to. I'm not... That means nothing to me, you know? Right. What's important to me is that I'm still out here playing for the fans that want to come see the show. Anybody Super who doesn't... Fan. Who doesn't come, it doesn't hurt my feelings or anything right. you know that's fine man but still and all each night is singularly badass each town has its own way about them has uh, its energies. own well yeah diff different energies but each one is over the top crazy over the top badass violent and very much like the old days to where there's circle pits, uh, stage diving. Uh, it's unheard of not for the big, big, for a big stage. But it's all very, very, very uh, militant, you know. It's, it's uh, very understood, you know. If someone busts his ass, they pick him up, you know, like right. the old days, you know. That shit don't happen too much. No, people get trampled and kids push each other and they don't know what the they, fuck they're right. doing, you know? That's not what you're here for. But I, I understand you also got, how many other bands are you in? Only one Don't right this now. one now? Yeah. You dropped all the, all the other ones? I've heard you had about six you were working with. I was probably at one point working with about eight bands, which... Uh, I guess spreading yourself then would be, you know... Uh, right pretty obvious but uh, I was spreading myself extremely thin and I could not give that much to my, of myself to all these different projects you know so in order for me to feel like I'm at my best feel like I'm doing something worthwhile I picked super joint ritual and the reason I picked super joint ritual is because it's new to the public actually super joint's been around since 1993 uh, just releasing it you're right it's new to the public music right now is at a very shaky um, not so strong as it has been in the past right. and before and like when music was shaky in the past when bands like Poison, Motley Crue and all and not that they were bad or anything I'm not saying anything wrong against these bands it's just how it was at the time um, hardcore heavy metal music skyrocketed you know the underground version of, of, of heavy metal people still considered bands like Motley Crue and, and, and uh, Poison and whatnot some form of heavy metal I guess glam metal here but but metal you know they, they the metal was always there you know uh, <clears throat> but when hardcore and true honest to god thrash metal speed metal satanic death metal uh all that came in it was just it was fresh not only fresh it was the angriest i'd ever heard any band sound in That's my life so Jason, you know it, it's 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 it was such a beautiful movement and i think it's time now 
because to me right now music is at a very whole home stage you know it's not extreme really anymore right. someone needs to come along and give it that goddamn kick, kick in the, the ass, ass. <laughs> yeah exactly and right. that's and that's that's where my head is at right now cool. you know all right how about how about you want to tell me a little bit about some of your uh, guys you got back in joe and uh, three and everybody now well you Are know they? joe's a badass you know on the drums uh, I've been jamming with him for years, and I, I probably have jammed the most with Joe or Jim, Jim, really? the guitar player who uh, plays on the other eight. side of the stage. Yeah, for my eight god. Okay. He also played in a band called the Mystic Crew of Clear Light, and they were badass. Yes. They were like uh, the Almond Brothers or something without vocals. They were just oh, like a, a jam, like a jam yeah. Totally, it was so cool. But. Uh, Hank the Third is probably the easiest guy to get along with and jam with, whatever, you know. He's absolutely tight. He knows his instrument. He right. knows what the fuck's going on. You don't have to explain to him a million times how you want something. He's very educated, That's you know. He, he knows music the way I know music, you know. He learned it on his own, you know. Nobody sat there with a stick in a chart and went okay here or there you know no one ever right. you know uh, Natural. well yeah i was nine years old when i first picked up a guitar and wrote my first song you know okay. so because you tell me you were trying to be kissed right no no i i, 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 I tried no to be that idea, when I, was I had no idea the concept of even writing like a, a full song or whatever but i did write my own parts, my own lyrics, everything. <laughs> so you know, when you gonna pop up on a CD, man? <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay, you got any? You got any particular ink you want to talk about? Because we're ink fiends here. Well, uh, you know what's your what, 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 or your favorite? Uh, <sighs> that's me. <laughs> so let me ask you. You know, I don't know. Everybody seems Paul Booth? Very, that was, yeah, Paul. that's Paul Booth. That's, that's uh, he's got to look all his own. Absolutely. He's, he is the man, though. That's uh, one of our more favorite. As far yeah, as I know. They're nice now, damn. As far as an old one, this is definitely one of my favorites to join us. And that's, that's from the CFH days there. The mighty black flag. And mighty, mighty. <laughs> at, at fucking one point in time, and this is no... Uh, disrespect to the artist because the artist did my first tattoo the Phil core and that'll never die it's it's <laughs> got you know it's humor to it and right. all but you know it's a growing up thing well you that's know? what you play in the Phil core <laughs> I love it you know and uh but Randy Adams he's a he's a good guy man and he fucking uh actually to tell you how it happened and he'll want to strangle me but uh, he did a face right here on my arm and when it was totally black and white like I wanted I was like man you know leave it alone you know it looks killer don't fuck with it you know and he's like oh come on man let, let, me, let me finish it you know exactly. you know he had this full idea in his head and by then you're sick of fucking feeling all this grinding on you and shit yeah. and you're like man this is fucking <laughs> i need to stand up and walk around you know for a few fucking few minutes anyway his last thing that he did was put red and blue in it and i almost fucking died the right fucking there on the in the chair I was like <gasps> you know fucking but Paul Booth to the rescue oh, he came in and fucking look at that cover up that's man beautiful. I mean that's a cover up exactly. for see. so <laughs> anyway well here's that's my cover that's on our story uh, what the <laughs> fuck was that yeah exactly no. alright all right, my last one before you before we get on your nerves or anything else Okay, got any road stories you want to share? Road stories. Nope. 
not, I got another question if you can't go for that. Um, my life, my life on the road is a story itself, though. Well, my life on the road is very regimented. I have within certain hours I do the same exact thing every day and I, I don't know why I do that but it just Happens. seems to be a, the thing to do you yes, know do. I work out thing. twice a day I stretch out constantly I meditate I read yeah, we got you read when we walk down on you yeah uh, I don't know, man. Okay. You know, I, I like to take it very mellow before a show because I'm concentrating very hard on kicking fucking ass, man. You, you know, that. mostly, you know. I really, you know, it's people ask, you know, you know, how is it hard mentally, you know, to be on the road, you know. If you want to reach that goal of, of reaching every person in that place, man, and, and, and no, you're letting them know that you, you're kicking their ass, you know. <laughs> uh, you're slaying you know, them. You've got to, you've, you've got to concentrate hard, and my concentration just, it can't be broken during the day, man. I, I you gotta, can't I, break that routine. I stick with the routine constantly. Okay, I promise it's the last one. No, oh, it's what, no big deal. Take right. your time. What is? What do you do that people would freak out if they heard that you did like your painting or? I paint. Do you? Sure. So yeah, so I, say, I ask people. I ask people do that. They get all kinds of different things. Well, hey, I like working in the garden. I like this. No, I don't like, no, like working in the garden. No, I, that's me. <laughs> unless I'm growing something. You? <laughs> unless I'm growing something. Unless I'm <laughs> growing something. No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh. Pretty, uh, I've told people in the past, you know, I'm pretty self explanatory. I collect fights, collect horror oh, films. Shit. I don't know if you have fights, I got kinds of fights. Oh, I got like UFCs to the fight. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm a straight up straight mar boxer. Mark, Mark, Keys to Queensberry rule. Oh, all right. Just I boxing. Some Muhammad shit. Yeah, Cash, I, uh, Cash is Clay, not Muhammad. No, Muhammad Ali's. That's the name, exactly. All right, Phil, I want to appreciate you for your time. Is there anything you want to say to the people of Cleveland? Hello. Cleveland, man, we love you. We love you. Always. Thanks, Phil. All right, brother.